panel discussion. Our next panel discussion topic is dairy revolution, differentiating through the power of industry. And for this, I would like to call on stage Mr. Radhe Sham Dikshit, Chairman, Ananda Milk. Let's give him a huge round of applause. Mr. Rakesh Matae, GM at Have More Ice Cream Private Limited. Let's give him a huge round of applause. Mr. Sopandeep Man, Director, Man Ventures. Mr. Anil Bhutani, Head Manufacturing at Mother Dairy. Mr. Salil Srivastava, National Sales Head, Jayashri Gayatri Food Products Private Limited. Last but not the least, our moderator, Mr. Shailesh Tiwari, Chief Plant Operation at Hamdard. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us. And uh, now stage is all yours. Thank you. Good morning, gentlemen. Good evening, gentlemen. Myself, Shailesh Tiwari from Hamdar Laboratories, Food Division. Today, we are going to discuss a very advanced topic that is how dairy revolution differenti differentiating through the power of industry four when we are talking about the industry four then it becomes very important ki what is industry four start from the industry revolution industry revolution was started in 17 17s 1770 with the fuel of coal and steel and then after in 1870 when the electrical energy was used for the industry at that time the complete conveyor system was introduced for the production and at that time the thought process was behind more production with the less time and then during the course of time in 1870 it was noticed that lot of work is going on with the manual fashion and human errors were there where the complete your quality of the product was completely compromising or affecting at that time the complete your requirement was raised for the automation of the processes. At that time, the automation starts in the, and that was the era for the Revolution Three, And it persists from 1872, your complete 1900, your 69. And at that time, it was a very complete physical system was there. But although we have started the automation of the our complete lines or the processes but some lacuna was there complete monitoring system was not there at that time also the automation was completely handled by the manuals at that time it becomes the requirement to for the digital digitalization of the automation by introducing the cyber physical system and now after 1970, the re Industry 4 revolution was started. In India, there is a lot of gap is there. Abroad, a lot of tools with respect to the Industry 4 is already has been taken care of that. But in India, at the present time also, we have not started our Industry 4 tools for, the, for our operations. Now, this is the requirement of days and today's 
कि वी आर गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर इंडस्ट्री फोर टूल्स इन द ऑपरेशन फॉर द मोर प्रोडक्टिविटी फॉर द कॉस्ट इफेक्टिवनेस बिकॉज सर्वाइवल इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इफ यूर कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव इज नॉट देयर इफ यूर प्रोडक्शन इफ द योर रिप्रोसेस आर देयर देन यू कैन नॉट सर्वाइव विद दैट बिकॉज इट इज कॉस्ट इज इन्वॉल्व if your online parameters has not properly maintained or monitored you are not going for the data analysis at that time also a big challenge is there how to sustain for your quality of your product and this before going to discuss about the industry 4 we have we are very fortunate we have dr mr radheshyam dikshit ji from Ananda Industry, who is the MD of the Ananda Industry, uh, I would request Dr. Dikshit, Mr. Dikshit, to put some light or to his views how dairy industry is uh, flourishing at this right time. What are the challenges we are facing, and how we are going to automate our processes, Dr. Dikshit? Uh, thank you, Tiwari ji. Uh, good morning, all of you. actually dairy is a you can say middle of challenges and opportunity so there are are lot of challenges from uh, you can say start from farm gate to consumer end uh, let us discuss from challenges then i will discuss about uh, you can say opportunities uh, first challenge is Uh, our land size is you can say just shrinking because uh, from uh, rural to urbanization is being ha happen even even you can say uh, each and every village semi village type of area so family size is increasing so we have to think how we can help farmer to to get more yield and more productivity per per cattle so this is the biggest challenge number 1 and uh, so land size is uh, shrinking so there is a really problem of uh, fodder also green fodder and you can say dry matter also so this is the sec second check challenge number 2 and third challenge is you can say also a good quality of water is really a problem uh, because water scarcity a lot of areas and even for the humans but for the cattle uh, also we need good quality of water and like that same even good quality of trained manpower is also a fourth challenge and fifth challenge is you can say technology intervention in farm gate so this kind of lot of challenges are there in in you can say farm farm gate level and let us come to you can say transportation level we need a lot of uh, technology intervention in in transportation in terms of refrigeration uh, we have built in our country a lot of uh, uh, you can say cold chain but still we need more focus on cold chain transportation for uh, milk and milk products then we come to you can say production level factory level there are so many challenges you can say a wastage of uh, uh, you can say your derivatives you are uh, taking out from your dairy production like whey is the one of the product in in developed country also lot of people has developed lot of derivatives out of whey but in in our country we are still behind we have to develop lot of uh, you can say technologies to even even i can say uh, like uh, we are importing lot of we isolate from uh, developed countries but still we have not developed any technology in our country so make good quality of we isolate so uh, like that same also we are uh, behind in uh, uh, lactose farm pharma, pharma grade lactose is you can say also importing from developed countries not able to produce in our country we are we are milk rich country still we are behind and also you can say water treatment is also a, uh, you can say challenge in in the production side also and uh, you can say lot of automation also required in in production area 
from from you can say farm gate to consumer end there is no technology uh, nobody is there to give you complete solution so piecemeal solution are available in our country but complete solution is not available so let's come to consumer level consumer level uh, uh, let us start from you can say this pouch milk the first pouch milk uh, we we use pouch milk and we just throw this polythene and there is a really hazardous problem uh, from uh, this pouch milk we, we don't have any any system from uh, you can say just consumer end to the, the recycle universe industry to just there should be a traceability so this uh, recycle uh, can happen very smoothly and it could it could give you the traceability also this this pouch is being recycled and this this pouch is not being thrown in the dustbin and it is not creating you can say uh, problem to uh, to your coming generations so this kind of uh, technology intervention also required in terms of uh, this packaging side and uh, you can say technology intervention in in coming uh, days what will be the futuristic packaging solution also in developed countries uh, nobody is using pouch milk but we know in coming ne next 10 20 years for our country pouch milk is most necessity but we have to develop some technology for this uh, pouch recycle and now i want to discuss about opportunities because for me dairy is socio economy a product a industry from farmer to consumer for farmer it's really uh, you can say just like atm farmer gets milk from cow buffalo two times and he can get two times money from the industry so that is the you can say just kaam dhenu guy in the in the you can say in, in in his house and you can say in industry also it is the most opportunity in this industry it is it is giving most uh, employment in terms of other sectors also lot of things to do in this industry in comparison to other industries so challenge and the opportunity are the both two wheels on these two wheels we are running dairy industry for me in ananda we are committed to give best quality of technology intervention to the farmer and to give you can say right from farm gate to consumer end a quality commitment transparency traceability and in terms of employment also we are committed to give minimum 1500 employment per year for minimum 20 years plan up to up to we have planned up to 2047 and in terms of consumer also we are planning to give consumer uh, more advanced uh, you can say technology intervention in quality product uh, ananda is committed for you can say we have uh, world class infrastructure for uh, our traditional paneer product fully untouched by hands so it is one uh, one of the best kind of uh, available in in our country and we are also committed to give more quality intervention in consumer products ji thank you sir thank you very much for giving the complete insights for the dairy industry and what are the challenges right now we are facing and what is the future how you are going to mitigate these challenges and opportunities and we are very happy to know that ki you have a very robust uh, system to mitigate the challenges with respect to the your complete quality parameters and the your in uh, input materials rightly said that uh, there is a lot of change when we are talking about the input material as well as uh, we know that through the research and development we always come up with a very good product but 
and deciding the all the quality parameters ki how it is going to be manufactured and how it is going to provide up to the end consumer but due to the lack of your complete uh, automation or your uh, technological intervention uh, we are our as our consumer there is some gap is there our consumer is not getting up to that level of your quality product because your technological intervention is not there when we talk about the technological interventions at that time it becomes a complete your infrastructure cost ki how it is the costly affair and how you are going to develop the infrastructure with respect to uh, uh, adopt your technological uh, new industry for your uh, uh, tools we have uh, rakesh matai ji is there from have more i would request rakesh ji uh, how modern technology keeping our cost down and food quality up because cost is a very important aspect cost is very important aspect we are ready to adopt the technological uh, tools for to monitor or to ensure the quality of the product but if you don't have the infrastructure you don't have the backup of the your cost then what is what how it is going to help thank you shalesh ji in present context quality is must quality supreme message must be there but the organization who is cost leader will be a leader in that segment sales is responsible for the top line of any organization but when we talk about manufacturing operations they are responsible for their abit so any organization uh, manufacturer or operations teams basic responsibility a basic strategy is that how to reduce the cogm and cogm consists of our basic expense head which is called raw material packaged material and the variable nature of uh, uh, other expense head like wages power fuel and if we see all these expense head are majorly related to your machines machines and related planning backward and forward uh, forwarded uh, linkages with your uh, you can say raw material packing material side and your finished goods side or you can say integrated supply chain so to reduce the cogm the most important is how to reduce your expenses and in expenses major talks in any of the meeting of the management we talk about machine efficiency because if machines have installed capacity based on your product they have some uh, you can say running capacity if your machines are not working or their net hours are not uh, we are not getting then definitely it is impacting your productivity your power ratio your fuel ratio everything so in present many of the organization they are we are using you can say manual uh, system of uh, entering data manual system of uh, entering breakdowns change overs startups and everything for me at the end of the day it is just a post mortem if you want to control your systems you want to control your cost you should have real time data and where the uh, you can say digitization industry 4.0 comes by putting sensors on your machine where each and every, where sensors can give you the uh, you can say uh, station wise per hour pieces based on that you can uh, get every hour what is your machine efficiency the, what are the nature of breakdowns why machine is stopped it is because of uh, uh, you can say change over it is because of the start up time or you can say because of breakdowns and breakdowns not only because of maintenance it is because of raw material packing material availability so in all context when you have a real time data then you have a real time decision making to correct those issues and rectify it by this you can improve your productivity you can reduce your power ratio which ultimately uh, you can say reduce your wage cost and power cost and the uh, best thing about this uh, uh, digitization is this through sensors you can get your data which be, will be at some clouds and through clouds it is at some uh, you can say gadget like tab where uh, anywhere whether you are at the same plant or you are sitting at the remote location you can see what are the trends going on for the maintenance team based on the nature of breakdowns what are the patterns of the different uh, you can say breakdowns they can go for the predictive maintenance 
like in freezers, ice cream freezers. After 500 hours, you have to change the rotor. So based on your data, you can easily get, uh, oh, after uh, seven days, my, uh, this uh, predictive uh, maintenance we have to do. And as a, we are a have more, and we are in the, you can say, seasonal business, where in the season, we can't afford any type of major breakdown. So if we are uh, already know what are the trends in terms of uh, uh, breakdowns on line, why machines are being stopped, we can take the, uh, you can say, preventive steps and pre predictive maintenance, which will help us to ensure that my machine will give me the quality product within whatever the best possible available time and whatever the best possible available speed, which will reduce my cost at all stages of my operation. And will subse uh, subsequently, it will reduce my cost of goods manufacturing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rakesh, by giving the very good insights ke how your uh, industry four is helpful for the reduction of the cost and increase the efficiency of your machines. Uh, as we know that when we are talking about the industry four, at that time, IoT is one of the concept that is the internet of the your things. And internet of the things, IoT is a solution, not a product, okay? And in uh, within the IoT, it is connected with the cyber or cloud computing and through which we can get all our datas and all the your uh, working controls by putting, as Mr. Rakesh has told us, okay, on the lines we are providing the complete your uh, different type of such sensors, which are the photoelectric sensors are there or pneumatic sensors are there which are controlling the complete your uh, mode of the function, how your uh, operations are going on and what are the parameters already you have integrated in the HMI. And based on that, you are getting all the, your data. And while compiling the data, you can reach up to the conclusion ki what is the uh, correct and what is going on incorrect. And you can improve without going for the further damage of your any line or product. Uh, we have uh, Mr. So Swapnadeep Mansa from Man Industry, One Ventures. And I will request uh, Man Saab, Swadhi Saab, ki please give some uh, your insights or inputs. How modern technology keeping the cost down and food quality up? That is the very important, the food quality up. And these two aspects, first we are talking to reduce the cost and the quality up. That is the challenge. Because by uh, increasing the cost, you can maintain the quality. But when you are going for to reduce the cost and maintain the quality, that is the challenge. I would request the, uh, Mr. Swapnadeep Mahan sir. Thank you, Suleji. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, at Mahan Ventures, we are into large scale manufacturing of a host of products, both wet and dry. And so all the challenges at the plants we face on daily basis. So in, in, at the plant, there's always a coin of what is the cost of quality? So the cost of quality generally grows exponentially as you go down the supply chain. So if, you're, if you catch a quality issue at the plant level, it is the cheapest way of rectifying it. Because once it reaches the consumer, you are incurring costs of maybe a product recall, which is a very, very expensive way of managing quality. So the, keeping the quality of the product should be paramount and is paramount. Now, there are various ways of doing it. You know, when we talk about automation, we've always said traditionally the automation has always been we replace the manual work with machines, whether it's sensors, machines, control systems, etc. Now, with Industry 4.0, there are, there's a more focus on an integrated approach where we're using IoTs, where we're using cloud-based technologies, where we're looking at things in a, in a more integrated way at a plant level. Because sometimes what happens is people who are working on the line get immune to making the product because they're doing it day in, day out. So keeping them motivated, you need additional layer, additional information, additional data system to help. Now, you know, I'll just talk about three points where we can, the technology can help in keeping our cost down. So the first one I'll talk to about is precision management system or precision measurement system. Now, 
in every food product, there is a list of ingredients that needs to go in. Now, how do you measure that they are being done or dosed at the precise level? You're not overdosing or underdosing it because in both the cases, there is an impact on both quality as well as the cost of the product. Now, in industry, there has traditionally been load cells being, being used, uh, sensors be, being used to do this. But with latest technology, we are saying there are, there are things like um, non-contact frequency-based system, where you're not even touching the product or the load cell is not even looking at the product. It is purely based on putting a laser through the product and looking at the measurement of what kind of quality or what kind of ingredient has been put in there. The other major system we generally use and it is being regularly used in our industry now is the vision management system where we are using a lot of uh, camera related technologies where to see the quality of the product. Now imagine there is a line of, you know, for example, a paneer line of 16 rows and there's a pr product quality issue in a single row. Now, how do you, you know, in a traditional sensor-based system or a pneumatic sensor-based system, you would ideally get rid of the whole line and then wait for the next batch. Now, with the vision management system, it is possible to pinpoint a particular product and just reject that. So a lot of vision management systems are being used and that really helps us in keeping the cost down because, a, a, you know, a fraction of a product is waste or reprocessed. Finally, coming to my third point, you know, and alluding to my, uh, you know, the, Mr. Matai uh, touched upon it as well. The, the world is moving towards predictive analysis now. You know, what has happened has happened. And, you know, everything else is a post-mortem, as he said. You know, how do we go on to prediction? You know, there are AI systems that are being developed. They are ca capturing so much data and analyzing the data at, su at such a speed. They tell you exactly at what time your machine is going to go for a breakdown. And before that, so you need an intervention before that to make it work, keep your systems on at all the time. Especially, you know, seasonal products, you need, you know, the seasons are short, you need to make the money well when the season is on. And if there are breakdowns in there, the cost really, really goes up. Um, finally, I would say, you know, there are all those sorts of systems. Plus, you also get very high tech, testing systems now where the predictability, pred predictability of those results and the accuracy of those results is really high. So, you know, when the product reaches the market, you can say, yes, it has the right product and the right quality has gone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sopnadeep. Uh, just uh, I am adding over here, ki when, you are, when you are integrating your machines with the new technologies, at that time you are avoiding any rework because rework is a, one of the cost uh, costly matter ki when you are uh, going to produce a lines and you don't know ki what are going uh, wrong and in the process and at the end of the process you are getting the uh, uh, different type of your products which is not uh, uh, passing as per the parameter. Second thing when there is a complete intermittent breakdowns are there. Intermittent breakdowns are there because we don't know ki which part is faulty and how my machine is behaving at that time. If we have the complete artificial intelligence is there on the lines at that time, definitely we will get some uh, your data ki which part is going to damage or what is the behavior of that part, mainly the running parts. And uh, predictively, we can manage or we can procure the material or inventory so that ki it can be maintained at the, at the, at the, at the, at the your spare time without compromising the productivity. Then what is the safety? What is the safety concern with all this uh, by the implementation of this uh, modern technology of the industry for? I think technology can play an amazing role in maintaining your food safety, at least at the plant level, because that's where I operate in. You know, whatever happens down the chain, my, my remit is that I shouldn't introduce a defect in the product and send it to the market, right? Because my cost, as I, I go back again, my cost of rectifying that is, that is the lowest. Now, you know, again, IoT systems are there which are 
which can very easily say which particular product has a susceptibility to go wrong in the market. Maybe a couple of months down the line, they, might, they would have enough data to predict that there would be more bacterial activity and this particular product is susceptible. The other thing is food traceability. You know, how do you, tra it really helps in traceability of your product. You know, when we talk about integrated supply chains, if there's a product recall, every company would need to do a complete food traceability operation where they exactly need to know how do you get to the root cause of the problem that you found. So that's what happens then is something like an IoT or, you know, maybe even blockchain. You know, we've heard blockchain in, you know, in a, in a sense, blockchain can be used for food traceability at a big level. And that really enhances the food uh, safety. Final point I'll say is, you know, in an advanced, a developed country like the US, CDC, you know, which looks after the communicable disease uh, in US, their data suggests that one in six person in the country fall sick because they have eaten a bad food product or bad food beverage. Now imagine if in a country which has an amazing supply chain, amazing cold chain, the, you know, th they still have one in six people who are falling sick because of this. The data for India would be massively more than that. So I think we need to com be conscious that why food safety matters and what we need to do at all levels so that the food we are serving, we're giving it to people is safe at all levels. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sopnadeep. And uh, it, was, it was very informative ke how Industry 4 is going to uh, give us the complete cost-effective products, quality products, as well as it is going to cater the complete your safety uh, concerns throughout the supply chain of the product. Uh, when we talk about the global technology, okay, what is going on in the global technology, before going to that, uh, we have Mr. Shalil Sirvasto is there from, uh, from the Magic Jayashree Gayatri. I would request to put his inputs on the future of the plant automation in India. Namaskar. Uh, on today, June 1st, World Milk Day, to all of you, a very good day. It's uh, considered as a Dr. Kurian's birthday. Today, we are discussing the future of plant automation in India. Dairy, where we have 24% global production ka contribution India ke liye kar raha hai. Wohaan par waakai iski jarurat hai ya nahi? Iske oopar hum log baat karenge. I have certain points which I would like to share with all of you. Lekin uske pehle mein ek baat jarur bolna chahoonga ki abhi Dr. Dikshit saab ne kuch challenges ke oopar baat ki ki land sahi milna chahiye fodder, cattle, chahiye, quality of trained manpower. But the most important thing in dairy is the quality of raw material. If this is raw material, then the quality of raw material will be right. And if your raw material is right, then your finished goods will be right. There will be no two rights. But for that, the automation of the plant important है क्योंकि आज की डेट में मैं एक पॉइंट से वहाँ से शुरू करता हूँ कि तो most of the Indian dairies rely more on physical labour whereas they do not realise the selling potential depends on the quality of the products which can be achieved if we automate the plant Indian dairy ये important बात है Indian dairy has a tag of inferior quality mostly because of hygiene so automation can bring lot of glory for Indian products in international market it has a great future so, uh, let me come through this plant automation. Plant automation has a lot of relevance to GMP, goods manufacturing practice, and cost reduction in the long run. We can achieve the following if plants are automatic, that one is a food safety, consistent product quality, reliability, production economy, flexible production, production control, and traceability. 
अगर हम फूड सेफ्टी से, सेफ्टी से शुरू करते हैं अभी मिस्टर मान ने एक बात कही कि आउट ऑफ सिक्स अगर वन बन, एक पर्सन बीमार होता है इसलिए कि उसको जो है फूड की क्वालिटी या उसमें एडल्ट्रेशन का इशू है जो हम लोग डेयरी में अक्सर फेस करते हैं तो ये एक चिंता का विषय है अब फूड सेफ्टी इज सिक्योर्ड बाय द कंट्रोल सिस्टम थ्रू द कंटिन्यूस सुपरविजन ऑफ इक्विपमेंट्स एंड प्रोसेसेस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट अ मेल फंक्शनिंग मशीन विल बी बोर्ड टू ए सेफ स्टेटस विद सीरियस फॉल्ट ऑकर्स एंड द प्रोसेस फॉल्ट विल स्टॉप द रिलेटेड प्रोसेस दिस सिस्टम इंश्योर द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ अनवांटेड मिक्सिंग ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स ओवरफिलिंग ऑफ टैंक्स एंड अदर फॉल्ट विच माइट कॉज प्रोडक्ट लॉसेज एंड प्रोडक्शन डिस्ट्रप्शन द प्रोसेस इज मॉनिटर्ड in exactly the same way during each production run which means that the finished products will always have the same high quality after fine tuning of all processing very well for an optimum outcome precise control of the process means that product losses and consumption of service media cleaning solution and energy are kept to a minimum as a result the production economy of a well designed and adopted control system is very good flexible production can be achieved by programming the control system with various production alternatives and production recipes changes in production can be implemented simply by altering a recipe instead of modifying the actual program and last the control system can also provide relevant production data and information in the form of reports statistics analysis etc the data becomes a tool for more precise management decisions तो बेसिकली अगर हम जो इस सारे पॉइंट्स के ऊपर बात करें अगर हम सारे पॉइंट्स को प्रॉपर चैनलाइज करते हैं तो प्रोडक्ट जो हमारा जो फिनिश प्रोडक्ट्स जो निकल कर आएगा वो बेस्ट क्वालिटी होगा इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड क्वालिटी का रहेगा और उसी से हमारा जो है फ्यूचर जुड़ा हुआ है एक बात जो यहाँ पर एक बोलना चाहूँगा कि हम लोग बात करते हैं कि क्वालिटी ऑफ वो दूध आता है एक जैसे एक जनरल प्रोसेस है कि दूध आया डॉक पे उसको चेक किया चेक करने के बाद उसमें से जो है फैट और एसएनएफ कंटेंट निकाला और उसके बाद आगे बढ़ाया अगर वो स्टैंडर्ड फीचर में हमारे साथ ऐसे लोग भी हैं जो दूध को जो है हाथ में देख के बता देते हैं कि उसमें जो है कितना इसकी क्वालिटी का स्टैंडर्ड क्या है किस पैरामीटर पर दूध है फिट है नहीं है यूज़ करना है नहीं करना है ऐसे भी जो है मतलब यहाँ पर लोग हैं लेकिन उन लोगों का एक लिमिटेशन है हर जगह वो नहीं लेकिन हर जगह अगर हम ऑटोमेशन सिस्टम लगा देते एक मेरे मित्र हैं हमारे डायरेक्टर कंप्लाइंस कल बता रहे थे कि यूरोप में यहाँ तक मशीनें लग गई हैं कि गाय आई डॉग लगी और उसमें से जो है मिल्चिंग के लिए उसमें सेंसर है कोई मैन नहीं है मैन पावर नहीं है वो मिल्चिंग के लिए उसने खुद ही सेंसर लगा के ढूंढा मिल्चिंग किया और आगे निकाल के ले गया दूध को और वो गाय वापस चली गई जब मिल्चिंग हो गई दैट इज अदर थिंग डाउन लेकिन प्लांट ऑटोमेशन की अगर हम बात करें तो सारी चीज़ें जिसमें जो है मिस्टर मान ने बताया राकेश ने बताया ये सारे जो है पैरामीटर्स को अगर हम लोग जो कंसीडर करते हैं तो ये ऑटोमेशन आगे आने वाले समय में हमारे डेयरी इंडस्ट्री के लिए बहुत जरूरी है थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सलील जी थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड वी हैव मिस्टर अनिल कुमार भूटानी जी फ्रॉम द मदर डेयरी आई विल रिक्वेस्ट kindly put your inputs on the future of the automation because it is a very important to have the automation system in our complete plant to control the all the your controlling parameters thank you very much uh, everybody has uh, sh shared the challenges and the future and everything i'm just sharing my experience 25 years back when i was working for nestle australia I was in their plant, and uh, when I used to receive milk, you know, the automation was on that particular plant was so high there was no unloading operators. Only driver has to unload, and there is an automatic system there where the driver get a signal, and the tanker is being unloaded. Sampling is done automatic, and adulteration was zero. And uh, when I went through their microbiological records, which everybody is talking about quality of raw material, which is basically a milk, their input uh, cow was SPC was twenty thousand. And while we have twenty million in India, and when I see a MBRT time, that was four hours, and hour is thirty minutes. 
now you can see 25 years back i am sharing my memory when i am uh, listening all this that australian factories they were handling 20 lakh liter milk per day and 5 lakh liter silos were there and tankers were having a size of 50000 liter the scale of operation was big and uh, you, the way we fabricate nowadays flyovers the plant was being fabricated like the in a cubic that cubes cemented cubes not like bricks we manufacture here so i have seen myself live automation and i feel india is still from europe and other countries 25 years back but yes there is a big scope to improve and industry has to find a solution nobody else will find a solution here for sure especially on a we always as a industry want good raw milk good raw milk good raw milk but who is working to teach them down the line to get a raw milk so that money has to be spent knowledge has to be spent so farmer can be made knowledgeable and he can give you you know the good quality raw milk first similarly on the other uh, raw materials like sugar you see indian sugar industry and uh, i have seen australian sugar industry is a huge huge difference in terms of raw milk quality and the counts and the shit we get in sugar here so there is a lot to work in india automation can be done i have seen 25 years back robotics on packing lines and uh, i have seen here robotics in solar lines but not in dairy lines here and the future is there you know in packing lines which is most labor extensive we need to have a robotics and maybe in future the ai might provide us some solution to that because dairy in all milk and milk products are perishable and have a limited shelf life so that is very important and uh, you know our weather also keep on changing so our supply demand numbers also keep on changing so manufacturing supply chain logistic everybody has to work but for automation we have to work on automation first in the field factory is easily available there are lot of vendors available now in india who can provide you the solutions which are being worked in europe and they are proven systems like in our mother dairy let it be in nestle where i work we already have a high tech automations you know where x ray machines are there in packing lines you know they can sort out everything all defective material will sorted out by x ray machine and there are high speed machines so those things are there but the only challenge comes is the cost and the scale of operation and the capacity utilization of a you know the plant we are setting up so these are the things that we have to also synchronize when we start a business and no doubt government is uh, you know stricting a norms of ngt especially water and i think for future i am looking for a future where the whole dairy will run on solar no electricity from outside let it come run through solar as on today it looks impossible but the time will come this challenge we have to accept at least 50% 60% power should come through solar and that like we think about mobile as on today 10 years back we never thought of it you know it will have such such a information available with us so technology is changing fast <coughs> so i see a future something like that what i have seen 25 years back in australia so thanks a lot but industry has to work a lot for themselves thank you very much thank you very much mr botani for your inputs when we are talking about the automation definitely automation is going to help us uh, for the product efficiency quality efficiency and by the several means we can reduce the cost also by uh, avoiding any rework or intermittent breakdowns of the machine but when we are talking about the automation who is going to drive this automation is very big challenge i think because we don't have the your trained persons are not there with us automation is okay the uh, the industries who are providing the solution for the automation they can provide the solution but who is going to operate that is that is very area of concern and how we are going to mitigate these challenges with the terms of maintenance safety as well as the quality in the manufacturing because if that safety is compromised or automation is not properly maintained or operated definitely is going to impact on the quality of the product dr bhutan sir uh, 
uh, I'll just like to add in this, I think Sinex group has to work in this. Uh, I, what I can suggest, you know, a lot of students are being churned out from the dairy technology courses, from the different, different institutes. Now, as the automation is coming, the industry is changing, now a group like Sinex has to bring in the, you know, the main dairy colleges also and tell them this is an industry requirement and they have to inculcate those kind of courses where the students are being taught how to operate automatic plants. About the automation, not only about the basic quality testing and other things, now the quality of education from the college has to be changed also. So maybe I request maybe in Sinex when in do in future involve some National Dairy Research Institute and some uh, Gujarat Institutes, bring those colleges key people in and uh, tell them this is an industry you can do a you know a job of pandit between industry and uh, the people who are uh, creating a people who are generating a people. Let them generate a quality people first for industry what industry is requiring. So I think that work need to be connected. And I feel there's a big gap in that. They talk in their own way, industry talk in their own way, but uh, there's no solution in between in that way. So that's my suggestion only. Thank you very so much, sure. Mr. Botani. And uh, as uh, you told that uh, we should have the institutions where all these automation your studies should be taught to our students so that ki they will be enriched themselves with the current requirement of the industry when they are moving to the industry to serve at that time they will they are well versed with the your industry four tools so that ki they can handle the industry four tools in the industry for their complete quality management and the management of the your complete supply chain now uh, as, as we got the some complete insights from all my uh, renowned speakers that by adopting the industry four, industry four is the complete solution in which lot of products are there which are only generating the data. You will get the complete set of data, volume of the data through the complete your uh, internet how you're going to manage this data, compiling this data, and actually materialize and uh, integrate with your complete requirement. Uh, I would request uh, Mr. Rakesh to put some your uh, inputs on the better knowledge of data pattern and how production helping for the better factory maintenance. We all know that production is a core department and uh, maintenance supporting them with the basic principle of QQM, QQM, that all should participate in terms of quality. But still in our orthodox mind, that quality is only the baby of quality assurance or maybe production. I will relate this uh, topic with the hammer ice cream, where in general, the maintenance team giving the KRAs of how they reduce the power cost, repair maintenance cost, and the, you can say fuel cost. But at Hamur, the maintenance team KRA are how can they reduce the raw material variance? How can they improve the productivity? Why? Because the production team runs the machine, quality team checks the, uh, you can say, uh, product quality, but maintenance, who give the asset in, re in that condition, which can give the perfect quality, and uh, you can say, allow machine to run at its full capacity. Again, if you have a one candy line, in your plant. I will, I'm just relating this uh, conversation with the ice cream plant. In candy line, you have a freezer, you have a, uh, you can say, a dozer where, uh, by which you can uh, fill the mold. Then you have a, uh, you can demolding section where you have a uh, picker, then wrapping machine, and then the packing. If you have sensor at all the line, at all the positions, and uh, the, you can say, performance of those stations you measure and you can get, okay, how much uh, number of pieces each station is losing because of the maintenance issue. As freezer is not running properly, dozer is not working properly, steam pressure is not proper in the demolding station. You can say spring off pickers is, uh, you can say, not working properly, causing damage of the sticks. Many a time, because this reason, sticks go al along with, the extra sticks go along with the, uh, you can say, ice cream and cause the market complaint. And then uh, you can say at the wrapping station, temperatures are not maintaining. 
So by these sensors, maintenance can get, get all the data. They have all the data points. They can make the fishbone diagram or cause and effect diagram to why these are happening. And again, the concept of productive maintenance comes. And all these patterns, all the data of six month study, one year study, they can have a detailed knowledge at what time, how your machine behaves. When we talk about maintenance, we generally talk about repair and maintenance cost. If breakdowns are increased, our repair and cost increase. But we never think like this, what is our opportunity loss? Yes. Opportunity loss means, assume you have a 2% breakdown in your uh, uh, ice cream plant, say, and you have a overall uh, month, uh, yearly capacity of 5 crore liters. So if 2%, because of 2% breakdown, if 2%... Sir, I'm sorry, I, I need to interrupt because I, we have uh, a short of time. And after that, we have a uh, uh, corporate presentation as well. And if you have any kind of queries, uh, we have a lunch as well after some time. In half an hour, you guys can ask them. You, you can take uh, like a couple of minutes, two minutes, one, one just for two minutes. losing capacity by 2%. So because of your manual ma modes, you don't have patterns, you don't know, you don't have any predictive maintenance. So if your uh, market demand is, you can say 4.9 crores and uh, 10 lakh liters, you are losing because of this. So assume when you, then at that case, either you are losing the market or you will go with some third party who can produce product for you. Then you have to give conversion cost. And the uh, present conversion cost of one liter ice cream is around 20 to 25 uh, rupees per liter. So assume 10 lakh liters multiply by 25 rupees, it is almost 2.5 CR. And I think it is pretty much money by which you can you run your digitization IOTs in your plant, which give you reduction in breakdowns, which is practically we saw in our HEMO plant and give, reduce your opportunity loss and in terms increase your capacities and reduce your losses along with good quality. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Rakesh, thank you very much. And uh, as uh, we have told that we are short in time, just I'm going to conclude to what is going on. As Mr. Patani has felt, we, we are 25 years back for adopting the industry for or the automation. If what the globally they have adopted uh, industry for tools for the to maintain their uh, cost, to maintain the quality of the product and uh, to maintain the complete your monitoring to check and monitor their complete your parameters throughout the supply chain and they are producing the quality products everybody is agreed to go for the automation and to adopt the industry for and definitely it is going to uh, develop our industry more robust in terms of your hygiene in terms of your cost cost as well as the quality thank you very much Okay, so thank you so much. Can we have a huge round of applause? Okay, for the felicitation of all the panel members, I would like to call Dr. Madhav Joshi, Chief Sales and Marketing Officer at Hexagon Nutrition Limited. Can we have a huge round of applause for Dr. Madhav Joshi? Okay, so now we will be starting our felicitation. The first one is Mr. Radhi Sham Dixit. Mr. Rakesh Matai. Mr. Sopandeep Man. Come on, let's give them a new jump of block. Mr. Anil Bhutani. Mr. 
Last but not the least, our moderator, Mr. Shelley Shivari. Thank you so much, Dr. Madhav, and all the panel members for joining us. Okay, so with this, we will be proceeding.